<laughs> I'm sorry. Your work is getting all over me, and I'm like trying to shake out. That's okay. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Um, and so. God, I just thank you for my sister. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the intimacy. I thank you, Father, that you have not forgotten her and that your eye has always been upon her. And I thank you, Father, that in her darkest nights and in her loneliest moments, God, in those places, she discovered more of who you were. I thank you, Father, that you have never left her and you've never forsaken her. And that was once just a verse that you had memorized, but now it's become your reality. And God has shifted some things in your life, and you have come to understand how deeply, not that you love him, but how deeply he loves you. And so I hear the Father say, I hear the Father say, just as I have always been, I'm always going to be. And so God, we rejoice in the wilderness, and we thank you, God, that we're coming out of it. And so the Bible says that, um, that he will restore unto you years that locusts have eaten and that even the rubble from yesterday in Isaiah 61 it says that yesterday's rubble will be used to build tomorrow's temple and so the enemy will try and tell you that there's a lot of debris and a lot of rubble from your yesterday and God says just like all the wasted crumbs were picked up and collected and there were 12 basketfuls and they were used God says there's not a rubble there's not a crumble there's not a thing in your past that I don't intend to use to rebuild the latter years into something better and into something stronger. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister. I want you to just relax into that word for a moment. So I'm just going to let her reconcile that word very easily. That's just the spirit coming on you. And so even as I kind of silence the mind by not talking anymore. All right, you guys, in this house meeting, one of the things I want you to take note of is it's small, it's private, it's intimate. But more specifically, there are several people who attended who had not only never met me, but more importantly, they had never experienced the supernatural touch of the Holy Spirit. So one of the things you'll notice is that God was really moving prophetically and was really speaking some specific words for those people who really needed to be confirmed and assured that this is God, that God sees me, that God knows my heart. So I was blown away at some of the specific things that God spoke uh, through me to these people because he is so intentional to allure each person's heart. Okay, so before you move on, don't forget to click like, make sure you subscribe, leave me a comment, share with a friend. All right, here we go. So even as we kind of just stay in that space, which is a delicate space where the Holy Spirit is clearly moving in here. And um, I just want to acknowledge, like sometimes we just kind of keep moving and we just forget to acknowledge the presence of the Lord in the room. And it's so sweet because we've had a chance to do these house meetings for years. And, um, you know, we, we tend to like, in a, from a human perspective, we tend to number things with numbers, right? But it's crazy because some of that, some of the, what the world would say is the smallest house meetings, like we've had some small house meetings, like in Nashville, we've seen God do magnificent things. <laughs> And it's so interesting how we try and put God into a box and say like, well, it's going to be a smaller house or it's a bigger house meeting. And so God's going to do a big thing, but he's a big God. Um, and he's doing a big thing in our life every day, um, all the time. And so really uh, my desire at these house meetings is really to give people the opportunity to not just hear about God and to not just learn about God and not just get information about God, but to really be introduced to the ways of God and to cultivate an atmosphere where we get to experience God. Actually, and I realize people are like, God's not a feeling. I'm like, he's not a feeling, but he does come with a feeling. <laughs> he is a person. And when I'm with my husband, I have a feeling. I should have a feeling, right? When I'm with a friend, I have a feeling. I like to feel a particular way when I'm with people. And so while he is not a feeling, <coughs> He, he brings a feeling into our lives. In fact, he should bring a feeling into our life, right? I mean, the Bible talks about the fruit of the, jo of the, the spirit is joy and it's love and it's patience and it's kindness and it's goodness and gentleness. These are feelings. These are feelings, right? And if all I ever knew of my husband was information and I never experienced him and I never felt a particular way around him, it would be a very cold relationship. And so my desire and my heart in these in these house meetings is to cultivate an atmosphere where God can just begin to move however he wants. 
And so there's always that delicate balance then too. Like when you clearly feel the presence of the Lord, I'm like, ah, we don't want to touch it. We don't want to guide you, God, but we also want to come alongside you and we want to give you opportunity to begin to move. And so um, I believe that the Bible is clear that the full gospel comes with a demonstration of the gifts of God that he says that this is how you will know that this will be a sign that they are believers, that they will lay hands on people and they will be healed. They will speak in new tongues. They might drink of something deadly, but it wouldn't, it will by no means, it won't poison them, uh, that they will, uh, cast demons out of people. And so I, I feel, and I fear, and I am saddened by, I think a lot of uh, ways in the kingdom. I won't even say the church because we are the church. I don't want, I want to box us into the four walls by the ways of the kingdom and how we have limited and capped how God can move, how he wants to move. Um, and we've made him all about information and we haven't given him room to move. And so it's, it's hilarious when you come in and you're like, I brought two virgins, you know, and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. Like we know, you know, <laughs> And I, I like to come into a room and be like, man, I want to experience things I've never experienced. Like, I want there to be things where it's like my first time seeing God work in that manner. Because I don't ever want to get to a place where I'm like, I've seen everything God can do. You know, and it cracks me up a lot of times, like, like on my TikTok or my YouTube. Obviously, I put a lot of stuff out there and people are like, he, he doesn't work like that. And I'm like, well, tell me then how does he work? If you're an expert, like, I haven't figured out how he works. Like, all we know from scripture is who he is. Right? And we see evidence of the ways that he works. And it's interesting because in the Old Testament, Moses has seen a lot of his works. He has seen him do amazing miracles. But then we hear him cry out and say, but I want to know who you are. I want to show me your glory. I want to know your character. And so what we do know is scripture is very clear when we're reading it, that we should be looking for the heart and the character of God. And I want to believe that we serve a God who works in magnificent supernatural outside of my ability beyond I can comprehend ways that's what I want to believe in and I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong because scripture is pretty clear but if I am wrong let me be wrong because I'm blessed in my wrongness <laughs> like I <laughs> please don't tell me um so I want to read a scripture uh, p passage to you tonight and it was something uh, I I sometimes I, I sometimes I uh wake up in the middle of the night who, who wakes up in the middle of the night? We all wake up in the middle of the night every once in a while, right? No, yeah, you're good. Um, you're, it's golden. Got it's it. golden. Um, and uh, is it not, is it Monique, do you, she has not sung with us forever. I know, it's been a while. It's been a, like years, I think. So I was like, Monique. And she was like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we need to show you our new space because we want to do a praise and worship night there. Um, you in? Yes. Okay. Uh, we w it, Kyler wants to call it on the floor night. Ooh, uh, okay. <laughs> on the floor. Uh, yes. Yeah, because I was like, I'd love to do it, but I don't. I don't want to have to minister every time we're there. He's just like, let's just call it on the floor night. Come and get on the floor. Let the spirit find you. You know. Okay. I am gonna read this passage to you. So you know, I'll like. Uh, so sometimes when I'm awake, I'll just turn on scripture and I just like kind of sleep, sleep, sleep through in and out. You know and. And the Lord, and, and so I had, it was, I was listening to Matthew, and I ha, must have had on the message, my son and I are reading through um, John together, but I was in Matthew, and, and sometimes he likes to, when I'm trying to explain things, I'll read it in a different version for him, so he can really get, grasp a different understanding. And so for whatever reason, it was in the message, and so I started reading, and I'm going to read it to you. And it, it says this, I'm in verse 27, as Jesus left the house, he was followed by two blind men who were crying out, Mercy, son of David, mercy on us. And we, when Jesus got home, the blind men went in with him. And Jesus said to them, do you really believe I can do this? And they said, why, yes, master. And listen to this. The Bible says, he touched their eyes and said, become what you believe. Become what you believe. And it happened. That's what it says. And it happened. They saw. And I think there's so many places in scripture that talk to us, you know, when, when he says to Abram, look out to the east and to the west, to the all four corners, and that which you can see, I will give unto you. And in some regard, he's giving him the authority to decide how much land will I have. And there's so many th places in scripture where God says, tell me what you see. Tell me what you want. If you remember the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says that she said, 
if only I could reach out and touch the edge of his cloak, I know I will be healed. In so many different places in scripture where we see evidence where God gives the authority to determine how, what will I experience tonight. He gives it to us. And I say this a lot because we travel a lot. And we, you know, a lot of times we have all kinds of people that come to these house meetings. And I will say this. Many of you have already predetermined the encounter you will have with Christ tonight. Because you have already decided he doesn't work like that. And for you, he won't work that way. <laughs> and some of you have decided tonight, I desperately need a word from God. I desperately need a touch from God. And I believe that that will happen for you. And that you will become what you believe. You're going to be the first person to get a word. I can tell already. And so, um, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> um, and so I, I want, I'm, I'm going to swing over to, to Joshua real quickly because I, I want to read a different passage that speaks to the same thing. Let me turn back to a um, different version here. Um, so in the first chapter of, jo of Joshua, of course, we know this is when Moses has passed. Like, who wants to be Joshua and fill jo Moses' shoes? Like, that's a rough, that's a rough position, you know? And, um, and so God ministers to Joshua directly and begins to encourage him and empower him and says over and over again to be strong and of good courage, to observe my word. And he says, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. That you may prosper wherever he goes. And he goes on and says, This book is the law that shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. And listen to this phrase. He says, For then you will make your way prosperous. And again, that phrase there is the idea that to the, to the same degree that you walk in my will, that you walk in my word, that you walk in my ways, you will make your way prosperous. Jesus says to the disciples, if you have the faith the size of a mountain, or the faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and it will be moved. And I would like to propose to you that some of us are waiting in the room tonight for God to do what he's given you the authority to do. And we haven't, we haven't made a decision that God has handed the baton off to us via the Holy Spirit through the guidance and the wisdom of, of the word of God to say, I'm going to make my way prosper. I'm tired of being victimized. I'm tired of being small. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of being on the bottom. I'm tired of being the tail. Because God says, I'm the head and not the tail. That I'm above only and never beneath. That's what he tells us in Deuteronomy 20. I'm not making up stuff to talk to you guys about. That's what he says in Deuteronomy 28. And some of us are like stuck in this place where we're like, but I, I'm at the bottom of the dog pile. And God is saying, if you would reach your little mouth out and just begin to breathe in my presence and you would begin to believe me for bigger things and you would begin to speak even the things you don't yet see. That's what it tells us in Romans. If you would speak even the things you don't see as if they already are, if you would begin to declare the thing, if you would begin to move on faith, Come on, the blind man couldn't see when he was trying to get to the pool of Siloam. He, it was a walk of faith. It was a walk in the dark. And a lot of us are standing in the dark going, God, can you just come and get me? And God's like, no, baby, take your first step. And you will make your way prosperous. And, and my hope and my prayer tonight is that that excites us and that empowers us. Right? And so we don't feel victimized anymore, but we also don't feel angry with God. Because what happens is, is we teach this puny little gospel that if it's God's will, then he'll get you out from under the pile. But maybe somehow you deserve where you're at. And, and, and God is saying tonight, no, baby, get up. Get up and make your way prosperous. Make your way prosperous. Can I minister to you? Yep. Come on up. Can we hold each other a little bit? Do you want to hold me? <laughs> 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 Can we hold each other a little bit? That's good. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, you want me to just deliver the word to you like this? Yep. Okay. Am I gonna? If you go down, I'm gonna go down right on top of you. <laughs> just so you're aware. <laughs> Look at Kyler's like, I don't know if I can catch two of you. Good thing I'm petite. 
<laughs> okay, so just to clarify, I have never met her before. I know it looks like we're, we are besties now, for sure. I'm just friendly. Swing this way for me, just like this. I'm going to swing you around this way. So um, the word that the Lord was saying to me is he, he talks in the, in the scriptures, he says um, that often God brings a godly sorrow into our life that leads a man into repentance. But here's the beautiful thing of what it says. It says he leads a man into repentance that leaves no regret. And there have been some things in your life that God has brought into a godly sorrow and you've been repenting of those things. And the devil wants you to feel like you're stuck in condemnation and shame. And the message that I feel like God wants to say to you tonight is, baby, you can walk away from those things that he wants to relieve you of your regret. And I often tell people that conviction is just an invitation to go to a deeper level. See, the religion will teach us that conviction is condemnation. But there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No, I'm not making up something to pray over. I'm just speaking scripture. Romans 8, 1 says, therefore now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I'm just going to keep saying it until her soul comes completely into an alignment. I hear the father say, I am not holding you accountable for the things in your past. Why are you holding yourself accountable for the things in the past? When I have said, I forgive you, will you say, I forgive me? I'm just going to leave it a minute. Just give it a minute. I'm just going to give it a minute. And so, Father, I thank you that even tonight, even tonight, Holy Spirit, that you are just reminding her of your grace. Come on, I hear the Father say, that his mercy triumphs over his judgment. And, and the enemy's been telling you that there's a judgment that's due you, but the Bible says that the wrath of God was satisfied on the cross. And so, Father, I thank you that tonight you're setting her free from condemnation. We're loosening you up. We're just loosening it like, I just like to like get people's body in line with the freedom of the Spirit. So I thank you, God, that tonight you're just setting her free from condemnation. We're setting her free from condemnation. Thank you, Lord. We're good. Freedom. I speak to every spirit of guilt, shame, condemnation, and I tell you, you've got to leave this body today, right now, in the name of Jesus, all the way out. All the way out. Just let that out. Let your body do whatever it needs to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep receiving it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you think she's getting set free right now? Right? How many of you believe everything that was spoken over her is scriptural and biblical? It's what God has in mind for us, right? He says there's, like, the enemy wants us to be stuck in condemnation, right? So God says, oh, no, not on my watch. I'm going to set you free. Nice and easy. Just nice and easy. So what we see here is a little bit of healing, a little bit of deliverance. I also think there's some generational curses being broke right now in the name of Jesus. <coughs> nice and easy. Just keep releasing it. So I believe that the body will just, once you break that agreement, things are leaving. That's why I give people permission, just let your body do whatever it needs to do. We're just going to let it do whatever it needs to do. Sometimes I'll go ahead and yell with people, like, let's just yell that out. Let's just get it. You ever feel like super pressure? You're just like, ah, I need to just get it out, right? It's possible you might be getting delivered from a demon. <laughs> we say that to each other all the time. Like, was that a demon? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How, are you guys nervous right now? Okay. It's totally normal. Do you have any questions? I may or may not have answers. <laughs>